Okay, before we start, let's get all ready. Let's go to chapter three. We finished everything. We finished everything except for the transcription of the British English speak, uh, speaker reading Arthur the Rat and the American English speaker. Then we have performance exercises. We'll just go around the room. Everybody read some things and then we'll be done with that. That won't take too long. And then we're on to chapter five. So I guess we can record. Ha shan kaila. Uh, let's look at the transcriptions here and see how we did. For British English, once there was a, this is good, was a young rat named Arthur. Arthur. But, but this is not right. What's wrong here? It's not the upside down A. The upside down A is the sound in pot. And let's erase this because this is put. Okay. Pot in British is pot. Pot. And the open O is pot. Pot. This is long, this is short. This one is the upside down A. Pot. This one is pot. And this one is neither of those sounds. Which sound is this? Alpha. It's just ah, it's plain old, right side up, ah, the letter A with no hat on it, ah, the. And I'd put a, if it were a more detailed transcription, I'd put a length mark, ah, the. So we have no schwa there to replace the R, but we have length. Ah is very long, ah, the. But ah is long in American too, father, yehenta. So ah is the longest vowel there is anyway. So In American, especially. In British, long and short vowels, they're more consistent. long and short, But this is the longest vowel we have in American. It's also long here, of the. All right, second line. Yes. Yeah. That was. Let me see what I wrote here. Yeah, in fact, I accepted this because that's the theoretical pronunciation if you're careful there. But he didn't say it that careful. He said the. The was. I heard that too. That's the way I transcribed it. Anything else? Yeah, this is actually better. There, I'll accept because that's the theoretical correct pronunciation if you look it up. Uh, can we transcribe what? As once. Oh, with a T. That's a narrower transcription. If you want to put a T in there, there's an epithetic T. Once. If you want to. That's a narrower transcription. Okay? More detail. Anything else? Let's try to be a little bit fast, but I want everything to be clear. So uh, hopefully we can do both without too much sacrifice on either. And then second line is who could, Dema? Okay, pardon my using my fingers here. Who could, who could, what? Never make up, make up. Let's see what I have here. I think this is okay. I had, I had this sound, make up, make up. Actually, as I remember, it's probably going to be a wedge because it's stressed, make up. Can you don't sit and put this in your rules, your notes? Regarding phonetic rules, allophonic rules? No, not allophonic rules. These are more on the level of compound stress than they get If we have a phrasal verb like make up or turn on or give up, these are all called phrasal verbs. I don't know if I mentioned this before. These are all phrasal verbs and both words are stressed. But this one sounds more stressed because it has the what kind of stress? It's the final stress in the utterance, so it gets what? Tonic stress. Keep that in mind because 
Some people think this is not stressed and this is stressed, and that's not true. Both are stressed. But because the shi in this, in this position is the, last, is the last syllable of that utterance, it gets tonic stress. So it sounds a lot more stressed and higher. Make up, turn on, give up. That's the same in British and American. We both do it. And because of that, I transcribed it as wedge, make up make up and not make up. But up is also possible, so make up, make up. It may be reduced, but I think this is better here. His, he may not have voiced it. I wrote a Z here, I heard voicing. Make up his mind. I think there's voicing there. And remember, even if there's voicing, it only may go through half of the sound. However, we have a, a voice sound here, so there's a good chance that the voicing was continuous. His mind, his mind. So this should be voiced, in my opinion. So he could never, or we didn't mark the stress here. Once there was a young rat named Arthur. All right? Stresses. Who could, who could never make, make up his mind. Uh, when? Yeah, who wrote when? So say that. All right, watch out because I've told you many times I prefer that you say when. I don't use when myself. But in RP, in the more Biaozun type of British English, it does not exist at all. So you wouldn't hear it from Peter Latifoged. My British friend tells me that many times. It's completely gone from British English, the standard kind of British English. Other dialects may have it, for example, Scottish for, or some other dialects. But in standard British English, it's gone. OK? So there's not going to be a who there. Mm -hmm. Whenever, stress, whenever, his friends, let's use the upside down R. It's hard because the book has gone back to the right side up R. Whenever his friends asked him, okay, questions? And remember this with the SK, and don't say axed when you're speaking American or any, lang any standard, um, standard English dialect. And I want to share something quick, although it's going to take more time. Um, I got a note from a, well, not a note from a student. When I was reading a student's notes from lab class, just the Ying Ke and reading through my students' notes. He said, I think it's unfair that you require us to know that saying axed will offend people or will distract people. Remember I told you that axed is non-standard English. It's part of southern US English and also often black English, right? Yes. And the thing is, if you suddenly say axed when you're speaking English, it distracts your listener. Do you remember when I told you that? Because they will suddenly be thinking about, oh, that sounds like black English, and they'll get distracted. This student said, I don't think it's fair to require us to make allowances for that. Because we're Asians. We have nothing to do with Southern or black English or your race relation problems. That's not our problem. We're just Asians trying to speak English. And if we make this mistake, you shouldn't judge us for this. Do you understand his argument? It's very hurly, but. I, I discussed this with my British teacher just a few days ago. He reacted immediately and very strongly. I didn't even finish what I was saying. He says, of course it's not fair. <laughs> and then he says, but you have to learn it to be competitive. If you don't want to distract your listener, our reaction is so immediate. It's, it comes from the amygdala. It doesn't come from our forebrain. The amygdala is all about emotion, right? Okay. Yeah, this stuff is processed by our amygdala, and it reacts much faster than our forebrain can. Remember, our forebrain is clever, but it's very slow. So when we hear that pronunciation, it goes straight to our emotional center, and we react, even if we don't go like I did. So you can say it's not fair, but that's not going to help you if in the future you refuse to remember this. Do you see what I'm saying? If I say, oh, if I talk to you like that, what is your feeling? You're laughing, right? Immediately. Why? How do you feel? Sherry? 
it sounds kind of ridiculous on a foreigner, especially. 听到外国人这样讲会不会更好笑 ？Or not? 啊，你做不做到啊 ？It's you're all laughing. You're laughing so fast that shows that was an emotional response. It wasn't a rational response. Now, can I can I argue say, well, why should you, why should you laugh at my Chinese? I learned it in Tainan, <laughs> or or I just I just learned it that way. Do you think it's a good idea for me to try to go around speaking that way and then thinking I'll make a good impression? It, is that what you're going to expect from a, a scholar, from a from a professor? No. What are you thinking, Annie? It's really weird, isn't it? You have an emotional reaction. 有点格格不入，有点不合，对不对 ？That's what happens when we hear X immediately. It's an emotional response. I just want you to be clear on that. You can claim it's not fair. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's fair or not. You'd better watch out for it. Any kind of an X is just one example. Other things may cause reactions as well, but this is one that really does. And I've gotten the same feedback both from. British people from Australian people, of course, from Americans, Canadians. We all have the same feeling, so you really need to take it into consideration. Okay, asked. Next, yes. Ah,、oh, thank you. We did the same thing again. I was processing it as one of these. Thank you again. Him. Yeah. That's right. Let me see what I've got here.、Um, whenever his friends asked asked him, I just have an H here.、Um, asked him is perfectly possible. No H is perfectly possible. But I was trying to be careful when I transcribed. I think I heard some aspiration. So if you heard aspiration, that's good enough for an H. But very often we would omit it. Asked him, no problem. Because if it's a 虚词 that's not stressed that starts with H. What can we do? If it's a function word that starts with H and it's not stressed, what can we do with the H? We can omit it. Put it in your notes. Give it to her. Give it to her. It should be. If we were careful, we would say, "Give it to her." That's only if we're careful and emphatic. Normally, we'll say, "Give it to her." Give it to her. Give it to him. Give it to him. So we perfectly well could have omitted both British and American. We could omit that H, but I heard an H myself. And up here, I'm sometimes I'm not processing things as carefully as I believe I could. Okay, so ost is definitely this A. Watch out for that upside down A. It's the sound in pot, as I just pointed out to you. Okay, Jerome, you find anything else? Please keep telling me anything you find.、Mm -hmm. Friends should be. Friends asked. Thank you. I'm missing that. I've got it in my notes. Anything else in the back? Somebody raised your hand. No. Okay. Okay. Up here, I often am just blind to a lot of the things that I, I know perfectly well. So you're going to have to help. If if he would like to go out with them, with them is good. That's what I heard as well. Let me check my transcription if I've got anything else here. Um, if he would like to go out with them, I put I put two ths here, two the sounds, with them, with them. It doesn't really matter, or you could lengthen it, with them. I I heard two, but you have the right idea here. And with, by the way, can be pronounced either with or with. 那个尾音有声无声都可以。So with them, with them, I heard two two thes. If he would would what, what did I put? He、uh, would I put a would here, not a would. I I still heard a would. 我自己觉得那个 would 比较好。Would like to go out with them, with them. How about the vowel and with them? Yeah, I put a schwa here. This is too clear. Okay. If he.
he would like to go out with them. Okay, what channel? Out, exactly. Okay, out. Thank you. And I was also looking straight at that. If he would like, if he would like to go out with them, if he would like to go out with them. Anybody else? Yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. A. a. Do we need the other A? Thank you. Just try being up at the board. It really is hard. <laughs> okay. And then five. Anything else? Okay, don't just rely on Jerome for everything here. <laughs> He would only, what's only? Uh-huh. Somebody left out an N here. Answer, I don't know. Okay. He would, uh, what do I have here? Answer, okay. Um, I have again u uh, here. Would is pros is possible, but I still hear the u uh sound. He would, he would, he would, would. I don't reduce it to ud. He would, he would. Well, come on, meonam are reduced. He would haisi yoga u. And I believe in British as well. This is what I heard. He would only answer. I don't know. Answer. Ha ha ha. Okay, here we go. Same kind of problem here. Answer. Everybody got that? He would only answer, I don't know. Got it? Okay, you got it? Uh -huh. He would only answer, I don't know. Anybody else catch anything? Was a sure of All right. We're done with British. Let's go to American. And I'm going to miss just as many things, I'm afraid. Yes, thank you. Ah, okay. okay. Sorry, that's way out of the way here. He, he wouldn't say j yes or no, or no. I'm sorry, this is the, this is supposed to be British, right? So we're gonna have to fix this. Either, there. He, he wouldn't say, wouldn't. This is okay. We use a little line here, not a dot. You used a dot before, now we're using a line. Is the stress correct here? He wouldn't. That's what I have, what I remember, and this is what's normal for an English speaker. He wouldn't say, he wouldn't say yes or no, either. All right, what else did I miss? Is that it, what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah, good. He wouldn't say yes or no either. Okay, anything else? Uh, he would always... Sure. Yeah, what's shek? Shek is a three. It's like a big dao. Dao is a shek. And makes me think of Shrek. <laughs> That's why what Dai Zula was at Kaisa Shang Ding. <laughs> Shrek. I also thought of Shack. Just like a poor Wuzi. All right. He would always shirk making choice. Where's the uh? Okay. Making a choice. He would always shirk. He would always shirk making a choice. All right. Anything else? Yeah. No, he would always. He would always. No, it's this one. It's this one. Okay. Anything else? All right. We're done with the British now? Okay. The American. Once needs a stress. Once there was, was, was. Which vowel? It's probably a schwa here because was is a sheet since on stress, stress. Let me see what I have. Um, I have, actually I have a, I have a, I have a wedge here. So 
Once there was, how do I use it? There was. I'd have to play the CD again to make sure, but I used a wedge here. If it's not stressed and if it's very reduced, then we can use a schwa. Otherwise, was we use a wedge. A young rat upside down is okay. A nemd ah Taiwan English. Taiwan English. Can all of you please learn the word name properly for the rest of your life starting from today? This is this is a perfect zhenju for Taiwan English. This is such a big thing. This is the number one vowel problem in Taiwan English. Let's fix it, please. It's not nemd, everyone. Got it? Put it in your notes in big, bold letters. Named. Remember this. Please remember underwear, OK? Remember underwear, and you won't get it wrong. Really remember underwear. You will remember it better. The sillier, the better. And sometimes, if it's a bit obscene, it's even easier to remember. I've learned that from memory books. A book, I read a whole book about how to improve your memory. It's called Moonwalking with Einstein uh, by Joshua Foer. And he's, he would often use a lot of really obscene images to remember things. And he remembered them quite well. He's a guy, after all. Okay, So once there was a young rat named this is American here, right? This is American, so we need Arthur. All right. Did I miss anything else? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. There. I missed that too. Thank you. That's better. We don't want there. It's not really wrong because. We sometimes make it sound like two syllables. There, it's over there. It's not so bad, but this is what we want here. Okay? Once there was, there was, there was a young rat named Arthur. Anything else? All right. Who could never make up his mind? All right. Did we miss anything? Anybody? Let's see if I have anything different. Who could never make up his mind? This is what I have. OK? If you have any kind of uh, corrections, let me know immediately. Whenever we need stress, everybody please put in your notes, please pay attention to stress marks. In a sentence, sometimes it's just a single syllable, but we need to mark the stress if it's a shizu in the context of the intonation of the sentence. Whenever his, his, S? S or Z? Z. Should be Z. Okay. Friends? Friends? Okay, this is also Taiwan English. When you see an S, everything is S, but many S's are actually Z. Asked him whenever his, what do we stress? Friends, and what else? Asked him. <laughs> I was just reading in a book about teaching, another book I've been reading called Why, no, How Children Fail. It's a bit shu, How Children Fail. I found it online for free, actually. It says that teachers often signal the answer to the students so the students don't have to think. So I'm saying, where do we stress it? Where else do we stress it? It's exactly what they said. It was a, an exercise where the students had to say which column something went into. And the teacher says, which column? Which column? <laughs> and then she's getting ready to write over the correct answer. So I guess I'm doing that here. All right. Whenever his friends asked him. Good. Anything else I missed? OK. I really have terrible blind spots when I'm up here. So that's why you're catching so much. So it's up to you. And that'll give you more, more exercise, no, more practice. If he would what? like to go. Out. Remember, this is what kind of a verb? It's a, it's a phrasal verb, right? So go out. And actually, this one gets a shout tonic. We haven't been doing tonic because our, our book doesn't use them yet, but we will be doing that in this chapter, in chapter five. Go out with them. With them. Is it them or them? Let me see. I have them. Go out with them. 
I have a schwa here. Anybody else? Any other corrections for this line? Okay, I know this is taking time, but I think it's worthwhile. To go out with it. And then also notice that you didn't have to put this in, but we have a little linking W here. Go out, go out. And they don't really emphasize that or has mention it at all in this book, but go out. That W will help you say it more, um, and then he would only answer, I don't know. All right. He would only answer, you're forgetting stress marks. He would only answer, I don't know. Okay? He wouldn't say yes or no either. Some Americans say either. I think either is more common. Either sounds a little tuo tuo to me. It just sounds that way to me because I grew up with either. And if you say either, uh, it sounds like you're trying to show off. Anything that gets closer to British English will sound showing show offy to me in American. Okay, but I have a British friend and it doesn't sound show offy when he talks. Except when he tries to show off, then it sounds show offy. So when he's arguing and he wants to be authoritative sounding, he uses 特别标准的英式. I'm not kidding, this is my observation because I've known him for 16 years now, a long time. So, mm, uh, I don't think so. And then he'll, he'll, he'll go into, you know, just very 正式 sounding uh, he would only answer, I don't know. And this would be a tonic, by the way, if we were marking that. He wouldn't say yes or no either. He would always shirk making a choice. OK? Yes? I think you have to talk louder. I would agree, yes, I agree with you here. And that was another blind spot, actually, because I definitely put a schwa here. He wouldn't say yes or no either. Let me see if we stress wouldn't. Yes, I have wouldn't stressed here. He wouldn't. Especially because it's a negative. And although so they look like xu zi, they are, they are honorary content words. Foldingsi are usually stressed because their meaning is so important. I know, I don't know. So, foldings usually get stressed. He wouldn't, yes, good point, say yes or no either. Yeah? Uh, what I heard is that or sounds like third. Yes or no. Let me see what I have. I probably. Um, that's exactly what I have. Thank you. Or is the full form. This is the unreduced form. So, er is better here. Or is the theoretical answer. Theoretically, it's pronounced or. In practice, they said er, and that's what I have. Anything else you noticed? Yes. Yep. Anything else? One more sentence. He would always shirk making a choice. Let's check that. Um, this, is what I, this is what I have. Choice. We don't need this ligature here. T and nigga ash, bushiaoyong ligature. That's understood. We almost never use that. But we do need a stress mark. Shirk needs a stress mark, making a choice. All right. Anything else you notice that I missed? Okay. Anything at all? Anybody? We finished this part of the exercises. The next part we need to do really fast. Are you willing to just finish up the exercises before break? Then we'll have a clean start for second hour. How about how? Let's get through the performance exercises, and then we'll be done with chapter three. All right, learn to produce some non-English sounds first in order to recall the sensation of adding and subtracting voicing while maintaining a constant articulation. Repeat the exercise saying, Sss, everyone. Now we're going to learn voiceless nasals. 
And these are useful in some languages like Burmese. And I had a year of Burmese in Hawaii, actually. I was in Hawaii for a year. And I had a very good Burmese teacher who was American, a really good Burmese teacher. And so I learned about these voiceless nasals. So just say, mm, mm. And you can't really hear the M very clearly unless you put a vowel after it. For example, ma, ma. Well, if you've got a vowel after it, then it becomes pretty clear. We'll do that later in the exercises. Right now, let's just do the nasals. Go. Mm, mm. Keep going. All right. You can do that with other nasals, too. And here it says, uh, let's try putting some vowels in front and after the voiceless nasal. So like, ah ma, ah ma, i mi, i mi. And try not to have any gap between the consonant and the vowels. They don't want you to say i, i. They want i, mi, but you did it fine. B is repeated with n. Let's try mm, mm, go. Mm, and then say, Ah na, ah na, ah na, good. And let's try n, mm. ah na, good. L, ah la, and I still remember the meaning of la. La means beautiful, 很美 La 下降的一个声调 in Burmese. All right, R, so ra, ah ra. That's if we use an American R, ah ra, 也可以 And then ah. Hua. Ah, hua. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Sounds like your brother. All right. Let's go on. C. This one is not hard because most of you learn voiceless W's in school as the normal pronunciation. I was familiar with it but didn't use it myself. So let's contrast everybody. Whether. 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 One thing Taiwanese sometimes do wrong is they make it a velar fricative. It's not velar; it is bilabial. So it's whether. 那个摩擦的声音是来自嘴唇，而不是来自舌舌后。Sometimes when you say like heart in my heart, can you hear that that's a velar fricative? All right, it shouldn't have that sound anyway because it's H. But if it's like what, where, when, the friction comes from the lips. So everybody again, whether, 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 whether. that's 天气 which, 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 which. All right, you can distinguish them, and many Americans do, but I recommend just sticking with the W, the plain W. The Burmese words, everybody. So to lift up is ma. Oh no, those ones ma. Everyone ma. ma. And then from is ma, ma, ma. ma. Once more, ma. ma. Okay, pain na. na. And then nose is na, na, na. 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 All right. And fish. This one's related to Chinese. 跟中文的鱼是同源， because 藏缅跟那个什么汉藏语系，对不对？是一个大家族。有汉跟藏，然后藏缅。Actually， 这个分类是另外一个问题。But the point is that most scholars believe that Chinese, Burmese, and Tibetan are distantly related. So Yuan Qin, and Yu is one of the words that is Tongyuan. 应该是 Tongyuan. It's 啊啊啊，然后借东西 is 啊啊啊。What's funny? Ah, okay. And thank you for reacting. Good. Just fish now. Na. Na. The 缓慢的一个四声 Na. 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 All right. And 借东西 Na. You have to hear my nose here. Na. Now it's okay. Good. Thanks for asking. Um. Let's just read a few of these words. Um. But we need individuals here. Because Annie's right in front of me. Annie, can you start? Read the first one. Again. Quage. Yeah. There's an S there. So everyone, plant shoots. Quage. Try. Plant shoots. Quage. 
Try it again. Um, shoops, Not shoops. Shoops. That's right. Next one. Um, behind you. Go ahead. Good. Try it again. Now, ju, 不要原存 That's a problem in Taiwan English again. Like, like children, 对不对 Children should be children. 不要用那个原存 So, ji zhum again. 不是 sh 是 s again. Not zhum. Almost right. Zhum. It's not zhum. It's once more. Mm-hmm. The spobum. Right. Watch that M. So, jizum spobum. Everyone. Spobum. Spobum. Yeah. There shouldn't be a vowel there. Good. Next. Try it again. Try to make it a little smoother. Okay. So it's t i b e. It'll. All right, let's try the next one. Okay, gung. Try it again. Everybody uh, be quiet while Julia does it. Go. Okay. Umbu tri gung. Mm hmm. Good. Next. Good except stress. Good. Okay, everybody. Twai bre it. Okay, it might be a br because ours are usually that. And then um, let's come back up this way. Go ahead, Ruby. Yeah. Oh, one more in the back. Sorry. Yeah. Good, everyone. Good. All right. Next. Okay. Try again. A little louder. Good. Everyone. It's not e though. It's i. Try it again. Wasn't that fun? Okay. Good. Next. Good. Can you do a little smoother? Okay, everybody. Sh. Remember, it's a short i. Try it again. Tree, i, chu, dru, ji. Good enough. Next. This CV pattern, consonant vowel pattern, is much easier, isn't it? If it's just CV CV, it's quite a bit easier. Everybody, try that one. Ile, tole, manu, duli, duli. Okay. Next. Good. Everyone. Five v v, boy du vu, fi fi. Okay, questions on chapter three. Anybody? Questions on chapter three. The test is on Monday, so um, try to ask now or on NTU Phonetics on Facebook. Please do not be shy about asking questions. You can ask classmates, but we have that forum, and everybody goes to Facebook, I assume. So please, please ask if you have any questions at all. Okay, break time. Try to hurry back, and we're going to work on chapter five. Can I get some help, please, with the board? The only thing I want to mention is um, before you erase it all. He wouldn't say yes or no. Some of you, two of you, came up and said you heard "hudia a yes." It's not quite yes. 
有一点那个味道。His tongue is lower than mine usually is. Listen. He wouldn't say yes or no either. He wouldn't say yes or no either. Either. 他有点 a 的味道。It's lower than my e. He wouldn't say yes. He's saying he wouldn't say yes. But 还没有到 he wouldn't say yes. 还没有到 e. So I would say the tongue is a little lower. What I would do is use the e plus a lowering symbol. What's the lowering symbol? It's just a capital T. It looks like a capital T. So it's a bit lower than we expect. So e with a lowering symbol. Any other questions you want to ask? We're done with that, I think. Anything else that 有点不服气的有没有 Okay, let's please try and make some headway with five. All right, everybody, pay attention. Really concentrate so we can get through as quickly as possible, and say exactly where we stopped. I didn't mark it myself. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so page one hundred and ten. Right. Uh, for some words, however, there are rules that are nearly. For some words, however. For some words, however, okay. there are rules that are nearly always ap applicable. Hmm? Applicable. Applicable. Applicable is also said, but I say applicable. Applicable. Everyone, applicable. 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 Okay. The alterna uh, alternation between a uh, before a consonant and a n n. Okay, so a uh, is the 不定冠词 they mean here. So a、uh, before a consonant and an before a vowel. Go.、Uh, it's even recognized in the spelling. All right. So there are some rules that almost always apply. With the 不定冠词 we know that we say a、uh, before a consonant, an n, an airplane, or an in the full form before a vowel. However, you will hear people say a egg, a elephant, a airplane. Yo, 不标准 And the reaction we have is something like "ask me a question." 类似的情绪化的反应是不标准 At least I have it. 我觉得最基本的东西，这个英文都没有啊，<laughs> 有这种感觉 All right, go on. Similar alternations occur with the words "the" and "to," which are the "t" before consonants and are often the "to" or the "to" before to. vowels. To. To.、Yeah. to. Before vowels,、mm -hmm. listen to your own pronunciation of these Pronunci words. Pronunciation,、mm -hmm. pronunciation of these words in the sentence,、uh, the, the man and the old woman.、Mm -hmm. When the old woman, the old woman, the, went. the old woman, went to Britain. Went,、uh, went, to, mm -hmm. went to Britain, and to America. To America, and there's a W linking sound there for me. A linking. A linking a glide there to America. 我会有一个有一点点 W. So to Britain and to America. Okay, so we've got those rules. Everybody note that could be in the test. A and for the indefinite article, the the for the definite article, the book, the egg. But many people don't follow that rule anymore. I've noticed even among people around forty, many of them don't follow that rule. They'll say the other. I say the other usually, but you hear the other, the egg, etc. But in theory, we have this rule: the man, the old woman. Yeah, 我个 yeah 的连音 by the way. To Britain, to America, to America. Go on. The two examples of the will often be pronounced. Of the. Of the.、Uh -huh. uh, will often be pronounced differently. It should be noted, however, that there is a growing tendency. Uh, there is、mm -hmm. uh, that there is a growing tendency for younger American English speakers to use the form the in all circumstances. In all. In all circumstances, even before a vowel, if a glottal stop is inserted before words beginning with a vowel, another growing tendency in American English than the form in the, American English uh, in the uh, in American English than the form the. Is even more likely to be used. All right. So this is what I just said. There's a growing tendency in Britain as well, I believe, and in America definitely, of saying instead of the other, saying the other. And if you put a vowel, I'm sorry, a glottal stop there, 那更会念 the 不念 the other. 如果用 glottal stop 在前面 if there's a glottal stop there, the other instead of the other. So if we use the, usually we have a glide, a linking glide, yeah. 
If we use a glottal stop, the goes together with a glottal stop, the other, the other. And I heard it when I was young, but I always considered it a bit uneducated, but not as bad as a airplane. That's really bad. Okay. The other, because right now it's gotten very, very common, even among older people, among educated, very educated people. So it's not a big deal. I will ask you to do it my way because I want you to learn it that way. But don't be surprised if other people don't do that. Um, I'll do the next paragraph. Some of the words in Table 5.1 are confusing in that the same spelling represents two words with different meanings, two homonyms. That means they're spelled the same, but they have different meanings. Thus, the spelling that represents a demonstrative pronoun in the phrase, such as that boy and the man. Neige, naga, is that. It's a demonstrative pronoun. What do you call it in Chinese? right? But it represents a subordinate conjunction in, it's also called, um, what do they call it? I'll think of it in a minute. It's, it represents a demonstrative, a subordinate conjunction in, he said that women were better. And in that case, we can use the weak form. He said that, he said that, complementizer, okay? Subordinate conjunctions, 是比较旧式的讲法. 它是个从属介系词,呃不对,连接词,从属子句的连接词,可以吗? Huh? Um, but it's often called a complementizer now in syntactic analysis, complementizer. So when it's a complementizer, it's more likely to be weakened to that, have a, have a 弱化的一种形式, a weak form. But as a demonstrative pronoun, we usually say that, that one, it was a meant, meant emphatic. That thing, did you write that down? That's kind of important. Pointing to something and saying that one, not this one. So we will often read the strong form for demonstrative pronouns. And similarly, when has is an auxiliary verb, auxiliary verb is auxiliary verb. Make sure you know that. Auxiliary just means helping. Okay? It may be z, as in she's gone. So has, could you reduce to z, she's gone. But it is hers or us when it indicates possession. She has nice eyes. She has nice eyes. 不会念字, she's nice eyes. 现在是不标准的, she's nice eyes. Z可以代替助动词的has. Okay? All right, next paragraph. At this point, we should note a weakness in the above discussion. We have been using phonetic transcription to note changes that occur. But although transcription is a wonderful tool for phoneticians to use, please go on practicing it. It's not a perfect one. Transcription is a very imperfect tool. It's an extremely useful, a very important tool, but it's imperfect. We can't show everything in our transcriptions. All transcriptions use a limited set of symbols. 可是语言里面我们用的语音常常是一个延续体, 对不对? 从这个音到那个音, just, just like someone just asked, two people asked about yes, 它是不是 yes? 它不是 yes, 它也不完全是 yes. So we're going to show that it's a little lower, the tongue is a little lower for yes, 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 有一点点. Now we can show that with diacritics, but there are many things that we can't easily show in a transcription. That's his point here. Uh, all transcriptions use a limited set of symbols giving the impression that a sound is one thing or another. And that's exactly the problem we had. So whenever we have something that's a little confusing and a little bit unclear, and sometimes you're afraid to ask because it doesn't sound like a 标准答案. Do you all know what I'm saying? 有个东西好像也既不是A也不是B的这种情形. That's really common, it's normal. But our system leads us to believe that it should be either A or B. And if you hear something else, then there's something wrong with your hearing or your brain. We often have that feeling, right? So if you have to, have to decide when Bruce says, yes, if it's a or a, it's not either. It's a slightly lower a, or it's a very high a. We have a continuum from one sound to another, especially with vowels. We skipped over the vowel, the chapter on vowels. But vowels really, a man random. Because the vowel, 跟另外一个vowel之间, 有无限多的, 
中间的过度的一些母音 ，OK。That's really important because we can put our tongue in any place along the line between, 比比方说 e and i, e. Okay, all of those are vowels. We don't use all of them in English, but they're all possible. So we have a continuum, 一个延续体 So things are not always clearly a or b. Often there's something in between, and our transcriptions don't always reflect that reality. Uh, the word has, for example, has been transcribed as has, is, or z, but there are really lots of intermediate gestures. That's especially true of reduced sounds. 如果被弱化的音，会有很多不同的、很接近，然后有点不一样的一些不同的可能的变体，可以吗 ？Are we okay? The word to has more possibilities than to to. Huh. There are even more than these three, and similarly, in the previous chapter, we discussed the first syllable in words such as potato. Okay, we didn't go to that chapter. We haven't covered that chapter. Potato, we can actually make that vowel voiceless. Listen, in theory, it's potato, potato, but in practice, it's often potato, potato. What happened to the vowel? It became voiceless because of the The initial consonant, the initial stop was voiceless. Plus, is that syllable stressed? No. So we often have tomato even is possible, even though m is stressed. P and T 两个都没有 voicing. Oh, not stressing voice. M is voiced, right? Tomato is also possible. Potato is pretty common. All right. So he's saying that we've already discussed that. We haven't, but I hope we'll have time. Before the semester is over, noting that the vowel can be there or not. Maybe there's a vowel, maybe not. Potato, potato. 那个快要那个母音可以快到消失的地步。Potato 可以说根本没有什么母音，也可能。But it's really not as absolute as that. 没有绝对的有跟无那么简单。There may be anything from just the p through a single glottal pulse of a vowel to rather unusually a full vowel. That、uh, sorry, a full vowel. Potato. That's strange, but we would say that if we were really emphasizing it. That's a potato. Didn't you hear me? Humble <laughs> fan. We will say that. And remember that when you use full forms, the fuller the form, the more impatient you sound, or the more patronizing. Patronizing means 大人对小孩讲话的态度 You don't normally want to sound patronizing to other people because how will they react? What's your first reaction when somebody's patronizing towards you? Ah,、oh, 好棒哦，表现得很好哦。That's what you guys do to us foreigners all the time. Okay, I'm used to it. 我现在习惯了，我根本不不放在心上。But if you did that in the West, people would get irritated that you're being patronizing. You're treating me like a child. If you use too many full forms, you may sound like you're talking to a child, or that you're being patronizing, or that you're impatient, or that you're angry, for many reasons. So be careful of full forms when you want something more reduced. This is important for your use of language. You need to be aware of that. It's like the X problem. We can't help it. We'll have an emotional reaction. You, you just you can't claim it's not fair. It's just the way it is. And the same thing is true of Chinese. Okay.、Um, 呃、uh, ，我说的不是摩托车，我说的是脚踏车 ，right? Same thing. You sound impatient and angry, right? And if it's normal, you say 我的脚踏车 then you sound normal. But 脚踏车 it sounds too clear, right? Too clear. For some reason, it's too clear. Either you're being patronizing, or you're angry, or you think you're deaf. Yeah, you think somebody's deaf. You're not hearing very well. 脚踏车，听到了吗 ？Right? Same thing in English. So languages do many things, pretty much the same. Speech is a continuum of gestures that may be produced fully or in reduced form, or may be virtually not present at all. So he's giving you three possibilities, but there's everything in between. You can have a very full vowel, like tomato, potato. You can have tomato, potato, with voicing, or you can have a voiceless potato, tomato, or you can have almost no vowel at all, potato. Potato. Okay. 
Next paragraph. These considerations also apply to another way in which words can be affected when they occur in connected speech. As you already know, sounds are often affected by adjacent sounds. For example, the N in tenth is articulated on the teeth or nearer to them because of the following dental fricative th. How many times have we heard this now? Many times. All right, many, many times. Similar effects commonly occur across word boundaries. So a word boundary is, for example, the book. The boundary is between the and book. That's a word boundary. We can have these assimilation effects. That's an important point. So that in phrases such as in the or on the, the N is realized as a dental, as a dental N because of the following the. So watch. In the, on the. Is it dentalized here? In the, on the. It's two different words. It's crossing a word boundary, but is the N becoming dentalized? In the, on the. Is it becoming dentalized? Be careful. It's okay with nasals, but it's not okay with, for example, S and Z. You cannot say as the. That's not correct for as the. For example, as the story goes, don't say as the story goes, so wine trans hua, we don't do that. For nasals, it's okay. For zi, it is not okay. For most other sounds, it's not okay. Nasals, you can put that down, because that's true of most languages as far as I know. One of the first, the first word I could write in Georgian was the word for mango, which is a wai lai yu. Georgian has very distinct distinct sound. So Georgian is a terribly, extremely complex language, but the pronunciation is the least of your problems. So for mango, in theory, it's mango. So it's a Georgian. It's a Georgian. And has a way be tonghua, mango. Okay? That's nasals. They're just very susceptible to assimilation. Um, finally, in this discussion of the limitations of transcription, think how you say phrases like fact finding. Do you pronounce the T at the end of fact? Did I just now? Fact finding. Did I pronounce the T? Fact finding. I most certainly did. <laughs> Listen, fact finding. Can you hear it? Fact finding. Hear the T? Because I'm an English teacher and I'm being very careful with my students. If I'm being a little sloppy, fact finding. I'm still saying the T, but it may not be very audible. I believe it's still there usually, but you may not hear it very clearly. Most people don't say fact finding. We won't say fact finding. It sounds really wrong. With no T gesture, nor do they say fact finding with a complete T gesture. So we don't omit it. And we don't make it especially clear. Instead, there is a, probably a small t gesture in which the tip of the tongue moves up slightly. A similar partial gesture probably occurs in phrases like apt motto and wrapped parcel. You cannot say there is or is not a t. So very often in phonetics, you can listen to it 50 times and you're still not sure. Keep this in mind because in the future, some of you, I believe, will go on in linguistics. And this class has a very good record of producing a lot of successful applicants to the Yuan Suo. I say that, I don't know if it's with some pride or what, but a lot of the people who take this class, even one semester, even if you don't take next semester, many of you success, uh, successfully get into uh, a graduate program in linguistics in Taiwan or abroad. Um, so, there are a lot of things you need to keep in mind, be aware of when you're doing linguistics, when you're doing phonetics. And one of these is, is it there or isn't it? It may be something in between. We're just repeating what we said earlier. So fact finding, fact finding. For me, there absolutely is a T, but it may not be very easy to hear. So maybe it's something in between. Okay? Point is clear? When one sound is changed into another because of the influence of a neighboring sound, there is said to be a process of assimilation, tonghua. That's a shu yu, you need to know that. It's in bold. And the opposite of assimilation is dissimilation, which is yi hua. Yi xiang ke de na ge yi. 
There is an assimilation of n to an identalized n because of the the in the phrase in the. The assimilation may be complete if the nasal becomes absolutely dental or partial if it is somewhere between dental and alveolar. 它不是是不是完全变成齿间齿间音不一定。它可能有一点点。It sounds a bit dental, but not extremely dental. Your tongue may not stick out, but it still sounds net dental. And it's hard to put it into transcription. Anticipatory coarticulation. You need that for the test. I'm telling you right now. Anticipatory coarticulation. I believe I mentioned it in a previous class. Yes. The opposite is what? Do you remember? Persevere. The 一个形容词 Perseverative. Perseverative. 就是维持原来的音的特色，让它影响下一个音。那个是 perseverative. 在预测、准备、念下个音，所以前面的音被影响，那个是 anticipatory assimilation or coarticulation. It's a bit difficult to distinguish between assimilation and coarticulation. I have distinguished it clearly in my own writing because I reviewed a whole book about coarticulation. 一整本非常的非常的专门的书 I was going to say 枯燥 but this is going on. Video, so I don't want to insult anybody. And it was, it was hard to read. It wasn't cool, zao, but it was very, very technical and very dense. The whole book was about a coarticulation. So you can distinguish the two, but generally I don't. Assimilation and coarticulation, 基本上就是同化。某一个音是被前面或后面的音所影响，有而起的变化。That's assimilation. Our, we have anticipatory, perseverative. You need to know those two. Okay. Anticipatory coarticulation is by far the most common cause of assimilations in English. So this is normal for English. Usually we are getting ready for the next sound. So tens, the n is getting ready for the th, so the n is changed. Other languages, however, use more perseverative articulations. For example, French. French uses more perseverative articulation. Um, let's let's go to the English example first. In this process, the gesture for one sound is affected by anticipating the gesture for the next. But there are also perseverative assimilations. Underline that, memorize it. In which the gesture for one sound perseveres. The verb that perseverative comes from again is perseveres into the gesture for the next sound. The pronunciation of the phrase "it is." All right, is the s and is is it voiced or voiceless? It should be the s and it is. It's written as s, but is it voiced or voiceless? Voiced. It's voiced, except in Taiwan English, it often is voiceless, right? But remember that. Remember to fix that because is is voiced. So normally we should we should voice the sound the s in is. Now there's a reason for it, by the way, and that is because function words in Old English, and I think that applies to is as well. Function words in Old English, they tended to be voiced. 如果是古英语的那个虚词的话，没有中音的虚词，它如果有一个 fricative， 通常会是 voiced. And that's why we say of. 这是古英语留下来的 We don't say of like you do in Taiwan English, right? Of. It really is voiced. A lot of fun. A lot of. We don't say a lot of fun. It's voiced. Because in Old English. Function words that were unstressed. If they had a fricative, usually it was voiced. Put that in your notes. This is an important point. That's why that of has the only f in our spelling that is pronounced v, because in Old English it was an unstressed function word, and the f was voiced. V. Okay. So is may be voiced for the same reason, but when we say it's, that z has now turned into what? It's it's fine. It is it is fine. It's fine. What happened to the z in its? It became louder. Everybody, please. You're almost voiceless. How about if you have some voice when you say voiceless? Go. Can you have a little more energy? It's it's only Wednesday, right? It's not TGIF and it's not Monday, so you can I know you can do better. Say it louder. That's good enough. I'll accept that. Okay. So it's it's 
Okay? It is. Those of you who have questions, I'm going to repeat it now. It is. It is. S. Spelling the S. S. Nian zuo zi, right? It is. Is. This is a book, right? It's pretty old. But if you make it into the contraction, it's. The T in it actually affects the z and turns it into a voiceless s. So it is becomes voiceless. It's no voicing. Okay, ma? That's an example of perseverative assimilation in English. It's not so common. But that's, that's a common word. But perseverative assimilation itself is not so common in English. Uh, anticipatory assimilation or co-articulation is much more common. Okay? Um, there is, of course, nothing slovenly. Slovenly means sloppy, lata, or lazy about using weak forms and assimilations. So a lot of people say it's sloppy English, or you could say jiaozi is sloppy Chinese, and I've heard the same thing about Cantonese, any language. Only people with artificial notions about what constitutes so-called good speech could use adjectives such as these to label the kind of speech we've been describing. It's not lazy, it's not sloppy, it's not bad. It actually increases our efficiency because if the meaning is easily predictable, it does not need, the word does not need to be pronounced so clearly, right? We can use a shortcut because there's no point putting a lot of effort into something that is already clear. Information value is high or low. It's very low. If the information value is low, we will tend to reduce it. This is important. This should also go in your notes. Whenever the information value is low, we will tend to reduce the pronunciation of a word. We'll de-stress it. We'll neutralize the vowel. We'll, we'll weaken the vowel. So things will get weakened when their information value is low. So we're really talking about information structure in this whole chapter. So rather than being labeled lazy, it could be described as being more efficient in that it conveys da the same meaning with less effort. Weak forms and assimilations are common in the speech of every sort of speaker in both Britain and America and other places not mentioned, Canada, Australia, South Africa, etc. And in probably every language of the world. But I have to say, like I said in a previous class, Georgian, 比较没有这个现象, Weakening of sounds, 比较没有. And it's something that amazed me, because Georgian is such a difficult language. And you may have had the same experience of watching a very small child speaking English very well. Have you ever had that experience? And you think, you're only three, four years old. How can you speak English so well? And I don't speak that well. Many people have that experience with children. When I was in Georgia, I would watch little four-year-olds speaking fluently and very crisp and clearly. And very liuli, and it just amazed me. That language is so hard. How can you do that? <laughs> but that's how we feel when children master their native language, even if the language is very complex. Um, so anyway, that was just Georgian. I don't think they have so many weak forms. That was my experience. It's much crisper and much less reduced. But English has a lot of reductions. Mandarin has quite a few as well. Um, foreigners who make insufficient use of them sound stilted. People will notice it, and even if they don't know exactly what's wrong, you will feel it in Chinese as well. You feel it immediately. And remember, these, are all, these all cause emotional reactions. It's not really rational. All right, we have just a tiny bit of time to start on stress. Stress is most easily identified in citation forms. Got that? I didn't say it loud, but this is important. The citation form is the easiest place to find where the stress goes. In conversational speech, speech words can be unemphasized, I would say de-emphasized. And when this happens, some of the properties of stress syllables may not be realized. What's one reason why we may not stress, for example, a content word? It fits repeated. Or if something else is being contrasted. 别的东西是有focus 在, 
放 contrast， 对不对 ？I don't want this one. I want that one. 其他的东西全部都会压低了。So if you are listening to a complete sentence, it's going to be harder to identify the correct stress. When you need to know the stress, go to a dictionary and use an online dictionary with audio files. Is my advice. That's actually something that bothered me about mainland Chinese dictionaries, because Taiwan the what should we call it? Chinese, 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 whatever you want to call it. 里面 the Chinese spoken in Taiwan, the Mandarin, you don't have many 轻声 right? 轻声并不多 You have some like 我的东西的 and 我们那个门可以是轻声 But how about how do you say white radish? White radish, 什么汤 Lobo, right? You you call it lobo. Does anybody call it lobo? No, not in Taiwan. But that's the normal way to say it in in mainland China, especially in Beijing. Lobo. And I, whenever I used a mainland Chinese dictionary, I want to know 波到底是哪是第几声？他只告诉我是轻声。我一直很不舒服。他到底他真正的声调是什么？他也不告诉我。All right. So in that case, because it's already conventionalized. 那个波，除了那个萝卜的波，有没有别的地方会出现？那个萝卜的波，有没有别的词会出现 ？No. So there was no way I could find out what tone 波 was except by listening to people in Taiwan. They make it a first tone, right? Right. So anyway, that's just a sort of counter example. The dictionary in this case would not tell me the tone. But if you go to a dictionary to check the stress of a word in English, normally you will get it clearly. In its citation form from the dictionary. In running speech, you may not. Let's just finish this page. This is very important. In in citation forms, a stressed syllable is usually produced by pushing more air out of the lungs in one syllable relative to others. Write it down and memorize it, because I'm going to ask you, what is the physical realization of stress? Okay, 你是怎么样用身体把 stress 念出来？ This is how you do it. That's the only thing we can say. You may do other things, but this is the only one everybody seems to agree on. What is it? P pushing more air out of the lungs in one syllable relative to others. Every bit is important. 它一定是跟别是跟别的东西做对比 It's always relative. It's never absolute. 所以跟另外一个音节来比的话是更用力挤出空气 from your lungs. You need that for the test. I can tell you right now. You need to be able to describe what is physically involved in producing stress in an English word. It may also 这是第二个可能，可是不是绝对的 It may also have an increase in laryngeal activity. That means the 声带 Often it will. Uh, the the vocal folds will vibrate faster. Where are you going? Go. My vocal folds are vibrating faster to produce a higher pitch. Though sometimes it goes lower, right? You're going. You're going. The stress is on go, but did it go high? No, it went very low. So it says increase in laryngeal activity. Often it's a sharp decrease. It goes very low. So the laryngeal part, 那个很不一定，那个很很不可靠。But the lung power part, we agree on. You're using more effort to push air out of your lungs. That's important. So stress can always be defined in terms of something a speaker does in one part of an utterance relative to another. That's the really important part. Compared to something else, you're doing some more of something, whatever it is. It's difficult to define stress from a listener's point of view. A stressed syllable is often, but not always, louder than an unstressed syllable. That's number four in our list. Stress 记得有四个，四种呈现。Do you remember what they are? First, remember to check again. 是的，那篇重音真的很重要。Please read it again. It will help you with this chapter. 是的，重音真的很重要，真的很重要。你要看。All right. So first, pitch. Second. Length with a k, that epithetic k. Length. The third thing is clear vowel, vowel clarity, 很清晰的母音 a full vowel rather than a. If it's a stressed syllable, the vowel will not be a schwa. It will be a full vowel. That's number three. 
First is pitch, usually higher, sometimes much lower. Two, length, it will be longer. Three, vowel clarity, 母音的清晰度，那是第三点。Stress, 第三个特特征，它的参数。So we won't use a schwa in a stressed syllable. It will be a clear vowel, a full vowel. And fourth is loudness. It is louder. Loudness is not the most important. That's why we put it at number four. The most reliable thing,、uh, let's say, in declarative utterances, it is usually but not always on a higher pitch. The most reliable thing for a listener to detect is that a stressed syllable frequently has a longer vowel. Than it would have if it were unstressed. So even if you're whispering, you can hear a longer vowel. You can't hear the pitch if you're whispering. Okay. How many times do I have to tell you? How many times do I have to tell you? My pitch didn't really change, but you can hear the length. You couldn't hear a pitch really because I was not voicing anything.、Um, But this does not mean that all long vowels are necessarily stressed. The second and third vowels in radio, for example, are comparatively long. Listen, radio, e o, 非常清楚 They're not stressed. Radio, 还有个 e o 在那边 right? They're very, very clear, but they're not stressed. So unstressed does not always mean it's going to be a schwa or reduced. Some unstressed vowels are not reduced at all. All、right? They will be a little shorter, but they're still. These are comparatively long, but they do not have that extra push of air from the lungs that occurs on the first vowel. Ray, Ray, I'm pushing harder. D O, not so hard. Conversely, the vowels in the first syllables of cupcake and hitman are they stressed? The vowels in the first syllable of cupcake and hitman are they stressed? Yes, but are they really long? No, they're short, but they have extra. Respiratory energy, and so they are felt to be stressed, and also pitch. Cupcake, hip man. You can hear the pitch clearly. They also have more energy from the lungs. We must stop. Do we have any questions before we continue?、Uh, no, before we end, <laughs> we're not going to continue. Any questions? Quick. Okay, you have a test on Monday, next week. Please come prepared. If you have questions, get in touch with any of us. Just post it on NTU Phonetics. Make sure you come prepared. Read the text carefully, Stanley. Yeah, and the rest of you. That's it. We'll see you on Monday.